Hi everyone, Happy New Year! Today is January 23rd and you are tuning in to the Professor Knits podcast. I'm your host, Nikki. And I think that because it's still January, even though it's late in January, I'm still safe to say Happy New Year. One time last year, I said Happy New Year to somebody in February, and it was just really awkward. But I think that is, January is a safe bet. So thank you for tuning in. Uh, this is a podcast about knitting and spinning and dyeing yarn. And I will put all of my social media contact information on the screen rather than uh, talking about it. Uh, so welcome. And I hope 2018 is off to a great start for everyone. It's off to a great start for me, even though we're already three weeks in. I realize it's been two months since my last podcast. I kind of got lost there with the holidays and uh, I really just, I got a lot of knitting done, uh, but I was kind of disconnected from podcasting and I wasn't even watching any other podcasts. I mean, I tuned in here and there, but not, usually I'm checking out a podcast or two every single day. And I went weeks without even watching one podcast. So it feels good to podcast again and also to start watching the podcasts again. So let's get right to it. I am uh, wanting to first of all talk about my finished objects. And of course, I am wearing one of my finished objects. I have a lot of finished objects, but this is uh, by far and away the one I'm most proud of because it's my Port Charlotte sweater by the magnificent designer Kate Davies from her Inspired by I Lay book. And I knit this, I started it I guess in November and it languished a little bit on my needles uh, over uh, for, for a little while and then I picked it back up and finished it over Christmas, the, the holiday break. And I adore this sweater. It is the best fitting sweater, best fitting garment I've ever made to date. And uh, I knit it out of, let me stand up and show you all. It's, it's a perfect fit. Uh, I'm still in my postpartum body, even though my youngest daughter is almost two. Uh, but it's going to be a sweater that I'll be getting a lot of use out of. I can tell. Um, Anyway, I knit it out of, the body is just a basic gray color from Jameson and Smith, uh, just a slate gray. And they only have numbers, so I'll I'll put the number of the color uh, down in the show notes. And the yoke collar, which was a really interesting slip stitch design that I learned a new technique, um, I knit this in the Jameson Spindrift in the daffodil color. And I have to say, I'm a little, I'm a little disappointed that I kind of copped out and went with just a one color yoke instead of the rainbow yoke, which is what uh, Kate Davies has in her original design. And the reason why is I'm gonna, this is the book that I'm talking about, and I'm just gonna read to you very quickly uh, what she says about the region called the Rins. I'm not too sure if I'm saying that. I can't read Gaelic. Or pronounce Gaelic very well, uh, but let, I'm presuming it's Gaelic. Uh, but let me just quickly read two or three sentences of what she says, and this is what a schmuck I am. I didn't read her blurb on the design until after I was finished. Um, but the three designs I've created for this section all recall the colorful contrasts of this beautiful landscape. Okay, so this is what this is the landscape uh, on this side that she's talking. The Port Charlotte yoke and the Shore Street hat feature the same slip stitch motif, which lends both color and texture to a series of rings of decreasing circumference intended to be reminiscent of a rainbow. Each row of this slip's simple stitch pattern uses a single shade only. Great for color work beginners. So I kind of feel like a schmuck because I feel like I didn't honor the original inspiration for the sweater. But, you know, I love it so much, and I love the the yellow and gray combination that I'm not going to beat myself up too much. But had I read that before I knit the sweater, because I was so excited just to knit the sweater, I didn't even read it. Had I read that first, I might have stuck with the rainbow 
motif. But that just means I'll have to knit it again, which I'd be more than happy to do because I loved it so much. And I knitted on um, US size three needles. And uh, so it was a long haul, you know, knitting on a two ply jumper weight or fingering weight sweater takes a while, but it was an absolute dream because it was such straightforward knitting with just the right amount of shaping to give a really good fit and just a, enough detail, interesting detail up here for an easy color work uh, garment. So I highly suggest it if you haven't uh, uh, already knit it. Now, before I move on to my other finished objects, this takes me to my next topic, which is uh, my um, knit along, my inspired by I lay, knit my way through inspired by I lay. And I've mentioned it a couple times and I just haven't gotten my act together. I think at one point I had sat down to create a Ravelry group and Ravelry was doing with some weird stuff and I just couldn't get it to work. So I didn't bother and then I forgot about it until this week. It's there. Okay, so now I've changed my Ravelry name. It used to be Sister Soldier. Now it's Medusa Yarn. And if you go to Medusa Yarn, there's a group called Medusa Yarn. And in that group, if you join up in the group, there is um, two threads. One is just a general information about the knit along, uh, general chatter uh, and general information. And then there's going to be a series of posts for finished objects. Now let me run down the rules very quickly here because there are none. I'm knitting my way through Inspired by I Lay because I love the book so much, but in order to participate in the Cal and win prizes, you don't have to knit through the book, right? I don't expect anybody else to knit through it. Although if you do, maybe if we get through it in a year or two, we can have a big grand prize. But anyways, for everybody else, all you have to do is knit from the book, right? So if you're only knitting one or two patterns from the book, uh, come on over and post your progress and each month I'm going to have a finished objects thread. Whips are welcome so if you've already started one you can enter it. Uh, finished objects right because this was published last year in 2017 so if you've already knit two or three or just one uh, uh, of the patterns from this book you can go ahead and enter it in um, to the finished object thread and I'm going to have one each month including January. So there's about a week um, left in the month. So if you've already got a finished object from this book, hop on over, post it in the January finished object thread, and maybe you can win. Um, and I'll talk about the prize in just a second. If you don't win for January, let's say you've knit the Port Charlotte and you don't win in January, repost it in February. Right? Keep reposting it until you win. Or repost as many objects as you want. I mean, I'm so laid back about this. I just want people to knit from, from this book. Uh, so it's really, the only rule is that it has to be a finished object when you post it in the finished object thread, and it has to be from this book. And who knows, I might even just say any Kate Davies design eventually, but for now, let's, let's pretend to have a rule, and it has to be from this book. So every month I will be giving an award, uh, a prize to a finished object and you can just keep and re-entering the same object. Um, and, but once you win for an object, you can't uh, enter for that particular uh, finished object anymore. So what's the prize going to be? Well, I'm a one woman show over here and I just opened up the group. So there's, I think maybe two members so far and those are the people I invited in order to open the group. Uh, so, um, all of the prizes are going to be donated by me, uh, unless there's anybody out there who'd like to donate a prize. So the first prize is going to be a skein of my own hand-dyed yarn from Medusa Yarn and Fiber in my black cherry colorway. This is a fingering weight, and I have, I have it on two different bases. I have it on an 80-20 merino nylon blend, but also more of a traditional sock blend of 75-25, uh, so whichever one you prefer. I think when I was dyeing um, this colorway, I didn't realize that I was going, I had two different color, two different bases. Uh, but anyway, it's my black cherry colorway. It's one of my favorite colorways, and it's yours along with a matching stitch marker that I made. 
and I'll talk about that in just a second. And you might be wondering, well, one stitch marker? Well, check it. Check out the bling. It's Swarovski crystals. Everything on here, um, all the, the the matching colors. There's two uh, bicone Swarovski crystals with a Swarovski crystal rondelle in the middle. So um, just just the one, and it matches the yarn. Now I made this, and I'll, I'll go off into a little segue. And there's the, the yarn company, Medusa Yarn and Fiber. Okay, my yarn company. I used to make jewelry, and I'm a bit of a hobby collector. I love hobbies. And about, I don't know, maybe seven or eight years ago, I started making jewelry just for myself. I, I wasn't selling it, just for myself and my friends and my family. And so I very quickly acquired all of the tools. I have quite a few um, beads and of course I only buy you know nice crystal beads, gemstones, glass beads, no plastic or anything like that although plastic's fine too. Uh, but because it was jewelry I was making for myself and my friends I always kept it. Uh, I, there was a really good bead store in town that only had high quality gemstones and so I have all of the accoutrement. And what happened is when I started having kids all of my hobbies, and that was just one of several hobbies, kind of fell away because it's hard to do any beading when you have um, toddlers running around, right? Because they can pick up and maybe choke on it. So knitting became my number one um, go-to hobby ever since I started having kids because it's so portable, it's so easy to tuck away. They can't do a whole lot of damage to knitting uh, provided they don't have scissors anywhere near them. So I realized, you know, now that my daughter, my youngest daughter is two and she's pretty well behaved in terms of not touching what she's not supposed to, knock on wood, okay, uh, I can kind of pull out other hobbies again. And I pulled out my jewelry making supplies and I started making my own stitch markers. So here is one of them. Um, I've got all sorts that I'll be putting up on my Etsy shop. Most of them are Swar Swarovski crystals, okay, and very nice. Uh, colorways or um, different um, jewel tones and that one I still haven't finished uh, and then I also have some for people who are a little bit more ghoulish at heart like some skulls and things like that again this one isn't finished yet uh, so yeah hop on over if you're interested in checking out some kind of higher quality bling for your knitting uh, for in terms of gemstones if you're interested in that kind of thing. So that's going to be the first prize donated by moi. Medusa yarn and a, a stitch marker. Okay, now I am going to take the sweater off. And the reason why is because I have worn it so much in the last two or three weeks that I've already had to wash it. And I don't wash my hand mitts very often. Uh, but I spilled a bit of coffee on it, the kids got yogurt on it, that kind of thing. And it's still slightly damp from my last washing. And so it's kind of, well, you know what it's like wearing a wet, wet wool is not comfortable. Um, so I'm just going to lay it over here. And continue on with my next finished object. So my next finished object is the... Sorrento shawl by Marsha Ibuki, Ibuki, who is also Fairy Little. She's got a podcast, a Canadian podcaster. I got to support the Canadians and I love it. So here it is. It's now this is a huge shawl. Okay. Um, it's the biggest shawl I've ever made. It was almost three full skeins. It's been a work in progress for a while, since September, uh, so it took me a little longer to finish it than I normally would, but I was knitting a lot of other stuff. I love it. It is a heck of a lot of shawl, um, so it's not for somebody who, do, who likes small shawlettes. Uh, and what is kind of funny is that I actually knit it for my mom. Uh, she, I asked her what colors she would like and she said pink and gray of course and I picked this pattern and this yarn and I gave it to her for Christmas and she gave it back <laughs> but you know it's I'm glad she did because she's not 
a, a neck kind of person. She doesn't wear a lot of this type of smooshy, big, comfortable stuff around her neck. She's more of a small silk scarf kind of lady or just a one skein smaller shawl. So I'm gonna make her another one. And I'm keeping this one for myself and I'm kind of glad because I absolutely love it. I do like lots of big, smooshy things wrapped around my neck like this. So I highly recommend the pattern, Sorrento Shawl. And the yarn I used, uh, I used three different yarns from three different companies. They were all 75-25 uh, Superwash Merino Nylon blends. So more of a traditional sock yarn and had I thought a little bit more about it, I might have gone with 100% uh, Merino rather than a sock yarn, but I really like these colors together so just went with it. So it's not as soft and squishy as it would have been had I gone with something with no nylon in it, but I do still love it. It's not a big deal. Uh, so the gray is my Medusa yarn uh, in the asphalt colorway. The speckled yarn is Artifact by Hedgehog Fibers. And the pink is Hue Loco in her blush colorway. And I think that's the Phyllis sock. Uh, so I just adore the, um, the shawl and I think I'll be getting a lot of use out of it. Um, so that's number, finished object number two. Now my other finished objects I don't have with me because they were Christmas gifts that I've already given away. So what I'll do is just throw, oops, is just put a quick picture up of each project as I talk about them here. Um, okay, so first one is socks. Socks that I knit, I think I was going to knit them for my sister, but then I ended up giving them, then I was going to keep them because <laughs> I'm a selfish knitter. And I messed up the pattern and made them way too big, so I ended up giving them to my mom. Sorry, mom, they were always intended for you. Not that she watches this anyway. Uh, so this is a vanilla sock, a basic vanilla sock from the Lang Jawal, Yawal sock, self-patterning sock that comes with that bobbin, which is a self, uh, a reinforcement thread in the, in the proper pattern and color. And what I did is I did an afterthought heel. So I just knit the tube, uh, which was just a treat because you didn't have to really pay attention. And I, I did knit these cuff down one at a time. So that was different for me. And what I did is I cut in the heel afterwards, which in, instead of putting in the waist yarn. And to do this, I followed a really good tutorial by Rachel over at Treehouse Knits. I'll link put a link to her uh, tutorial in the show notes below or the in, uh, description box below and it was kind of neat because you didn't have to stop to do any waste yarn you could just knit straight through and I didn't mind I mean there was a, I got a little nervous about cutting my knitting but she's very clear very she explains it really really well if you're not watching Treehouse Knits podcast you should uh, she's excellent she's got excellent content and gives a lot of information about different sheep breeds really good knitter most importantly. Uh, and I loved it. But I m messed up and instead when I was measuring out where to cut in the heel, I went, I, I just made a, a foolish mistake and went with the length of my foot rather than subtracting a couple of inches for putting in the heel. And they were way too big. And so my mom is quite tall. She's almost six feet tall. So she has much larger feet um, than me. So I gave them to her for Christmas. She loved them, but they were even a little too big on her. So she's going to use them more as like a house slipper than an actual sock. Uh, so she's already received them. She's already taken them back to Canada. So another uh, finished object that's already been sent on its way was a gift for my daughter's teacher, uh, preschool teacher, Debbie, whom I adore. And I knit... Her, I knitted her uh, some Selby mittens because she's the kind of person who makes me feel every time I, I drop off my daughter and pick her up, she makes me feel like my daughter is her favorite child. And she probably does that to all the parents. Uh, that's her gift, right? But I kind of secretly believe that my daughter is indeed her favorite. And she also proved herself to be very knitworthy because every single day she'll comment on something 
knitted by me that either I'm wearing or one of my kids are wearing and she gushes about it. She just can't believe, you know, because I always have my knitted socks peeking out of my boots or I've got a shawl on or mitts or a hat or something that's handmade and she always comments on it and, and talks, you know, about how much she wishes she could do it and all that kind of stuff. So I knitted her a pair of Selbu mittens. Here's a picture of it here. And I've been part of the Selbu Mitten Club that Skained Your Knits. Uh, another excellent podcaster whom I met when I was in London. Um, one of her patterns. And this particular pattern was the Mabodin. And I, it was the second time I've knit it. I've, I've already knitted it for myself. This time I used much larger needles. Six for the uh, cast on and size seven US needles for uh, the mitts. Because the previous incarnations of these mitts have been quite small. Uh, and this yarn was a worsted weight rather than a DK weight, which is what she calls for. And I I think I'm going to, every time, I, I'm part of the Selbu Mitten Club Knit Along for 2018. And I think I'll stick with a worsted weight for these patterns in a size six or seven needle because it's just a better fit. Um, and I use Patton Classic Worsted Wool in just the dark gray mix and the winter white. And it just was beautiful. And I have to say, I knit these mitts in two days. I cast on on a Monday night because I realized, oh my goodness, last day is Thursday. I got to get these done by Thursday morning. And I finished at like two in the morning Wednesday night. And I was only knitting at night in the evenings after my kids had gone to bed. So it was the fastest project I've ever knit. And turned out wonderful. She loved them. And I'm, I can't, I just love knitting these Selbu patterns. If you, it, it, they look so hard and complicated. They're not. Go over to Skein Deer Knits in Ravelry. Join the pattern. I think you can, the pattern club, I think you can buy them now and knit them. They're, they're wonderful. And, and Ellie is a, an excellent designer. Thanks. Okay. Now for my works in progress. Uh, let me start where I ended and that's with Selbu Mitten. I've got two works in progress for the Selbu Mittens, uh, and I've shown this before. This is just the, the Selbu Mitten pattern. It doesn't have a specific name. It was one of the first ones she ever released, and it came free with the Selbu Mitten Club. And it's a DK weight. This is what I was talking about, the earlier incarnations that I've knit being a little snug on me. Uh, still no thumb. And I knit, I've knitted this with uh, the, the purple is Rowan Felted Tweed in the Bilberry colorway. And the yellow is the Tansy colorway by the Mulberry, Mulberry Dyer. And I've talked a lot about this in one of my earlier episodes. Um, she recreates medieval yarns and colorways using natural dye. Uh, so I don't think I've made any progress since that last one. And which is a shame because I love these colors and so I'm going to try to get the other one, get the thumb finished and the other one done. Now my other works in progress is another of the Salbo Mittens and this is the Cavello and I love it. And I'm doing this one in, again, a much larger needle, sixes and sevens and a heavier weighted yarn, which is the worsted weight, the Patton's Classic Worsted in the bright red and winter white colorway, still no thumb, and it's been a real treat. It fits much nicer. I can't wait to get these ones done, and I, I'm going to be adding these ones. These ones I were a whip from 2017, so I can't enter this one into the, the knit along for skein deer knits, but this I can because I cast this on um, on January 1st. So I really, really like knitting these patterns. And I love how long the cuff is. Isn't that gorgeous? So just cla um, Patton's Classic Worsted Yarn. Really easy. So two mittens on the go. I also have uh, two pairs of socks on the go. One of them was knit, knitted up last year, um, but I still haven't put the heels in. This is what I was talking about, how it's not my favorite way to knit socks, simply because they've been sitting like this without heels for about six weeks now. 
And, uh, but again, it's just a basic vanilla sock doing the afterthought heel. The yarn is a BFL nylon, 20% BFL superwash. Um, 80, pardon me, 80% BFL blue face Leicester, uh, 20% nylon sock that I dyed myself in just a brown. They're not available. They were just tests that I dyed up, uh, just one-offs, but in a nice brown and, and yellow uh, color combination. So I really need to get the heels cut in, which I'll do eventually. My other pair of socks living in my first project bag that I ever purchased for myself uh, from Rachel over at Treehouse Knits with these beautiful winter foxies on them wearing different ski outfits. Gorgeous, really nice, well-made bag, uh, beautifully lined, nice zipper, um, little carry tab loop thingy with her logo there. Uh, so check her out over on Etsy. Check out her podcast and her Etsy shop. Uh, is another pair of vanilla socks in an alpaca socks that I've talked about and I'll give the information. Um, it's a wool alpaca nylon blend. Really soft. Really nice. And I'm knitting these ones, sorry, my stand, uh, two at a time toe up, traditional gusset and heel flap. I just turned the heel and now uh, I need to finish the heel. And again, it's, it's my preferred method of knitting socks because I know that when I'm done, I'm done. They're not gonna sit forever. Although I suspect, I think that the afterthought heel fits a little nicer, um, but these are my second pair of socks. And I knit all of my socks on 2.25 millimeter uh, Addy Sock Rockets. And that's another reason, I only have one pair of this size and these type of needles. And I think that's why these are still languishing is because I can't put in the afterthought heel until I free up these needles. So once I finish this pair of socks, these will get done because I'll have my needles. So two pairs of mitts, two pairs of socks, uh, a sweater that I'm doing. I watched the Fruity Knitting podcast last week and they had Isabel Kramer as the guest who I just, I had never knit any of her patterns. I'd always admired them and I just thought she was wonderful. It was an excellent interview. So I cast on her baldric because the Fruity Knitting Patreons, patrons were getting a discount on her uh, pattern. So it's, it's worth it in, to be a Patreon, to be part of the Patreon community if you want to support certain podcasts that have patron. So I'm knitting the Baldrick, and I've already got the body done. Uh, it's got this really nice garter stitch it's really it's the, the garter panel on the baldric goes down the side of the body from under the arm all the way down and then when i knit the sleeves there will also be a, a panel down the sleeves now i really have enjoyed the shaping uh she does german short rows for her shaping around the back i'm telling you it's german short rows for the win they are so not don't be scared of german short rows they're, I think they're easier than just a regular wrap and turn. Uh, and they sound scary, but they're not. And it really makes all the difference in the world for shaping. So very quick knit um, because this is on an Aran weight yarn, and I'll talk about the yarn in just a second. Knit on size nine needles. So they've been just flying off the needle. It's really pretty. Now, I also like because it's knit at a very loose gauge, so it's going to be a very casual go-to, but also very sort of stylish and relevant modern um, sweater just to pull over. Uh, and the yarn looks much redder in uh, the monitor than it is in real life. It's more of a orangey red in real life. And I've, I, I mentioned this yarn when I bought it in this, and, and mentioned it in the stash enhancement sometime last year. But it's Noro, Aran Waite. And it's a really nice yarn in that it is, for, I'm sorry, my glasses are so filthy. 40% silk, 
30% lamb's wool, 20% cashmere, 10% nylon. Color number 22, lot number B1, like there's, it's, there's no name. It's Cash Iroha, uh, but there's no name to the color. And I picked it up at a, a really good sale at one of my local yarn stores in Loopville, here called Loopville. And I got, I think it was 45 or 40% off because I bought the whole bag of it. Um, so nine skeins, so about 900 yards altogether. So just enough, I could play a little bit of yarn chicken with the sleeves, but just enough for an Aran weight uh, pullover. But I have to say, I'm not crazy about the yarn. It's soft, it's luxurious, it's got a beautiful drape and feel to it. But it's a single spun, and it's almost, and I haven't researched the yarn, so I could be, you know, completely wrong. It almost feels like it's hand spun, which is wonderful. I spin my own yarn, I love hand spun, but it's very thick and thin, which I don't, you know, if I'm spending that much money, had I paid regular price, on a luxury yarn, I kind of want it to be a little bit more consistent. And I knew nothing about the yarn before I bought it, so maybe that's the, the, the way this yarn is. That's fine. I like the way it's knitting up. It has a real sort of hand-spun feel to it with the, the thick and thin. This is what I'm very upset about. Every single skein so far, and I'm on the fifth of nine, has had one or two knots in it. And they're only 90 meters per skein, so it's not a whole lot. You know, if, I, if it was 500 yards of, you know, I'd expect it. But So I'm not too impressed about that. Um, one to two per skein, and they're so frustrating to try to hide um, in the finished product. So I don't think I would ever use this yarn again, but it's serving its purpose. It's been in my stash for six months now, and that's a long time for me because I keep a very small stash. And I like to knit the yarn, get it out, right? Get it out into the wild. Uh, I don't, I don't stash yarn the way a lot of um, people do. Overall, I'm very happy with with the, the project. Love the pattern. Uh, like the yarn, love the pattern. Um, it'll be done in the next day or two, I'm sure, because it's such a, a a quick knit. After the Port Charlotte sweater, which it was fingering weight on small needles, this has been a nice change of pace. Because my next plan uh, for my next Port uh, my next uh, Kate Davies, I think is going to be the OA. I have to get yarn for it, but that's going to be the next one uh, that I knit, I think. We'll see. Okay, my last work in progress, or part, yeah, my last work in progress is something that everybody is knitting, and that's a cozy memory blanket. Uh, just a basic squared cozy memory blanket to use up all of the fingering weight yarn uh, that I have leftovers. Um, so here it is. Now I'm doing something a little different in that I'm putting in huge squares every here, every now and then of from yarn where I've got you know 30 grams or more left over, uh, just to sort of eat up and make it give it more of a geometrical. Not, not so symmetrical look to it, big squares, little squares, that kind of thing. So I'm really enjoying it because it's a quick knit. And there's a little bit of crunchiness on here. I think maybe somebody got yogurt on it, or maybe I dropped some wine. You never know around here. Uh, I bought the, the blocking combs. If you don't have these yet, get them. I went from actively hating blocking my knitting, even though I do it for everything because it makes such a big difference, to not minding, still disliking, but not minding blocking my knitting. Get these. They are so much better than the pins. I mean, if you're doing a lace weight shawl, you might still need the rods, but these, these combs, they're the, they're the way to go. Get them. They're, they're pricey, in my opinion, $25 for a box. But you have plenty. You can do several projects at once. I can do a sweater and a couple of other things um, at the same time. Totally worth it. Right? Knit picks. Knitter's pride, sorry. 
uh, nip lock or combs get them. Now for stash enhancement, I have to ask your guys' opinion. I was at my local yarn shop and there were some Shalimar yarns there on clearance, 35% off. It's pretty good clearance for Shalimar yarn. And there was a sweater's quantity in this colorway, which is called, and this is the Ecus, 100% superwash merino. But this is the sand dollar colorway. And it really just looks like bare yarn with maybe, like, they just waved a little bit of gray dye in the general direction of the dye pot. It really just looks bare. So I can't decide, and I have a sweater's quantity of six skeins. At 35% off, really good, because it's regular $23.99. So I got it for $15 a skein for Shalimar yarns. Here's the question. Do I knit something in this sand dollar colorway, or do I dye it myself? What do you think? Do I dye it something else? I've got a couple of ideas for if I were to leave it, but I don't know. I don't know what I should do. What would you do? Would you dye it or would you knit something in the sand dollar colorway? Shall my yarns. So very excited about that. Then I went to my other local yarn store and picked up very new yarn to me. I've seen it, but I've never knit with it. Mirasol. And it is a nice fingering weight yarn. <clears throat> I can't see anything. 60% wool, 20% alpaca, 20% silk. 50 grams has 274 yards. I bought a sweat, sweater's quantity because it's only $11 um, a skein in this beautiful charcoal color, really soft. And I haven't looked into it, but Jinka was telling me that it's for a really good cause um, for some kids in Peru. I'm gonna have to look into it. But um, supporting Mir Mirasol yarns uh, means supporting kids living in poverty in South America. Um, so I'll find out more information about it and link it below. So I'm very excited. I bought a sweater's quantity of that. And then I caved. I, a couple of weeks ago, I'm embarrassed to admit this. I stalked Vol and Vine shopping. I kind of have this attitude, like if your yarn is that popular and it's that hard to come by, um, good for you. You know, of course, we all know Kristen over at the Yarngasm podcast. She's an adorable little little thing, right? And we all want, she makes amazing yarn and I wish her all the su success in the world, but I'm not going to waste my time, uh, tr you know, desperately trying to get your yarn. I set my alarm on my phone and I happened to be on my way to a function and I actually pulled over, went to a Starbucks to access some Wi-Fi and clicked on right at, at the time that the shop update was happening and uh, grabbed two skeins. And the only reason I did that is because I share with Kristen an affinity for mauve or mauve, however you want to say it. It's, it's definitely my favorite color. And I've come up with a really nice mauve colorway um, that I'll show some other time, not today. And I snagged some Woolen Vine. I got her uh, Woolen Vine number nine on her Blitzed, 75% Merino, Superwash Merino, 20% Nylon, 5% Gold, Stellina. And I also um, ordered a mystery one-of-a-kind speckle, so I had no idea what I was getting. Uh, and I love it. I, I don't know if it was just an accident or if she matched it to go with the, you know, like whoever ordered the mystery speckle, if she made sure it matched what else you were ordering. But look at how beautiful that is. I get it. I see why people stalk her shop updates. Um, very, very beautiful. But it was stressful. I will say, like when I was... I was so terrified of being, well, not, I shouldn't use these, so terrified, um, terrible experience kind of thing, because it was fine. But there was a little bit of heart racing when I 
to, to make sure I got it and that I wasn't carjacked. Um, so I can't, I, I haven't knit with it yet, obviously, and I'm, I think I might do a girl from the grocery store shawl with it. We'll see. And it'll be for me. Um, the girl's got some mad talent, but I don't think I'm going to go through that kind of stressful, like pulling the car over when the alarm went off. Uh, quickly like trying to scramble and see what I could get before she sold out. I don't think I'm going to subject myself to that again. Um, but I think that hopefully uh, she'll start to produce more because I know that she's got her own dye studio in her basement now and um, hopefully that means she'll be producing more yarn which means more supply and maybe not so much of a frenzy to get it. Although, I mean, it's beautiful stuff. I can see why people do that. Okay, so I hope that didn't sound negative because she's awesome. Her yarn is amazing and she's incredibly successful and deserves it. Uh, I just can't see myself putting myself through that on a regular basis, let's say. I'll probably do it again, especially if Grimm comes out or Venus Flytrap. Um, I'll probably do it again, but uh, yeah. So that was my special stash, my special treat to myself. Just uh, sign off and wish you all a very merry 2018. Put your knit on and happy knitting. Bye-bye.